We're coming to you from New York City. Today is Friday. What do you think, Frank? Have any idea? 24th. 24th is absolutely correct. Uh, in this half hour, uh, we're going to take you on a, uh, our final behind-the-scenes tour and uh, all kinds of excitement. Uh, you know, every show has writers, and uh, since this show began in June, our diligent writing staff has been cranking out brilliant comedy concepts. <laughs> but now that time has run out. It's obvious we won't get to all of them, particularly these which you're going to see, which I vetoed early on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, doing their own material that I rejected, Welcome to the first and only installment of Stupid Writer Tricks, Our Writers, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Gerard? Gerard Mulligan. Gerard, how tall are you? 6'4", Dave. What do you weigh? 230, Dave. All right. Uh, what, do you, what do you have that I passed on earlier? Pretty good one, I think. Okay. It's Monday, August 25th here in New York City. I hope you all had a good weekend. I think I did. If the amount of the bail is any indication. <laughs> Gary Mulligan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, our next writer is Paul Rayleigh, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Rayleigh. Good morning, Paul. David, nice to see you. You have a little something for us yes, today? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How many folks from Guam today? <laughs> Frank, what day is it? Uh, November, what, 57th, uh, 67th? Something like that. Ah, uh, well. Yes, you know, um, in the town of... In the town of Reykjavik, Iceland. Is it Reykjavik? Is that Reykjavik, Iceland. You must apply for a bald spot. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Drive safely. Paul Rayleigh. Paul Rayleigh, ladies and gentlemen. All right, who's next here on this? Oh, it's Ron Richards, ladies and gentlemen. You must be Dave, huh? Yes, I am. Yeah. I'm Dave. I've seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Ron Richards. Uh, you know, on my car, I got a bumper sticker that says, I'd rather be sailing. Right. And on my boat, I got one that says, I'd rather be driving my car. <laughs> I'd just like everybody to know that no matter where I go, I'm miserable. <laughs> Thank you. Ron Richards, Thank you very much, John. This is fun, isn't it? Rich Hall, ladies and gentlemen. You have a little something for I have a little morning? something, yeah. Have um, you ever been to the Statue of Liberty? You notice an inscription on it that says, give us your tired, your poor, and your huddled masses. And I've noticed you see a lot of still tired people, a lot of poor people, but you don't see too many huddled masses anymore. <laughs> Just to walk down the street and see them all over the place. So we have one here. female member of our writing staff, our head writer, Meryl Marco. Thank you, Meryl. How are you doing, Don? Right from the beginning, it was my contention. I read the NBC research, and if we would have had more sex, more violence on the show, I think we would have done better right from the start. Sex and violence? Sex and violence, and so I would like to share a little sex and violence. See, it's still early. We still have uh, 25 yeah, minutes, 25 maybe. Minutes. Maybe the show will turn be on it, after turn all. It right turn around. it right around. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, February. And for the gals, January. Whoa! Maybe you've got something there. And for everyone else. A little violence now? Something for the entire family. Some violence, ladies and gentlemen. and only installment of Stupid Writer Tricks. We'll be right back with our final behind the scenes.
Our young writing staff, they're good for a laugh, though nothing really comes to mind. Ladies and gentlemen, stupid writer tricks. <laughs> We, uh, we have about an hour left. Uh, let me ask you, is Harv going to sing all of these? He'll be singing all these introductions? Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, let me explain how this works, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we usually do a segment where people bring their little uh, pets on and do tricks for us and so on and so forth. Tonight, you're going to meet the writing staff of the late night television program. They are going to entertain you with their own special kind of tricks. Let's get on with it, shall we? Writer number one, a veteran, Mr. Gerard Mulligan, ladies and gentlemen. Special kind of night. It is a special kind of night, Jerry. And, and what, is, what is your stupid writer trick tonight, Gerard? Well, I'm going to share with the audience an opening remark that you've chosen not to do. All right, fine. An opening remark that I have passed by. Yes, well, you know, there's an awful lot of discussion these days about the insanity defense in, in criminal cases. And the trickiest part of it is proving you are, in fact, insane, the defendant. I just read on the way out here on one of the AP wires about this guy in Cleveland who successfully proved his insanity by producing a letter he'd sent to NBC asking why different strokes didn't expand to an hour. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. So that's not again, ladies and gentlemen. Our next participants, we have a team, Carl Tiedemann and Steve Weiner, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Dave. Hi, there's, there's more uh, introduction here. Uh, will oh, you sorry. please welcome our next team of writers, the curators and of this Pucci Pictures and close personal friends of Larry Bud Melman, Stephen Weiner, and Carl Tiedemann. Here, this is them. Uh, no, 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 no. What are, what, are, what are you gentlemen playing for us tonight? Well, before we go any further, we just have to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your first network television Thank you very much. Very nice. Okay? <laughs> In our humble opinion, nobody, and I mean nobody, deserves it more. Really. Oh, thank really, you. Thank really. you. That's very nice of you. <clears throat> and I want you all to know that we say that not merely because this man's name is on our paycheck every week, uh -huh. <clears throat> but because he happens to be a wonderful talent and a fine human being, David Letterman, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right, now, uh, now, wh what is your trick? That was it. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Mr. Andy Breckman, ladies and gentlemen. Andy Breckman. <laughs> Andy, how are you? Nice to Hi, see you, sir. Nice to be here. And uh, what are you going to do for us this evening? Uh, well, David, my uh, trick involves you. Uh -huh. I know you're a gambling man. I'd uh, like to bet you, right now, I'd like to bet you $10 that I can make you say, leave that clown alone. Leave that clown alone. $10? Fine, you're on. Okay. Chuck! Leave that clown Chuck! alone. <laughs> Get out of here. Come on. Let's go. Hello? Say, you're a clown, eh? Make us laugh, Chuck. That stinks! That's not funny. That is pathetic. You are the least funny. No one likes you. You stink. Look at this. Stupid. Hey, wait, stupid. Minute. wait a minute. You're just so wait a minute. stupid. Leave I that hate... clown alone, will you? Thank <laughs> you very much. There you are. Andy Breckman and Chuck the Clown, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Our next writer, Mr. George Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. George, how are you? Nice to see you. And what are you going to do for us this evening, sir? Well, you know, in the last few months, I've seen a lot of stupid pet tricks on this show. And Animals come on and... Yeah. yeah, rabbit on skateboard and stuff. And the other day I was sitting around and I thought, you know, George, you can do those tricks. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh... You're as smart as a dog, right? Yeah. Sure, I'm smarter than a dog. Yeah. So you've been teaching yourself to do some tricks? Yeah, and it's really been surprisingly easy. Huh. Uh, you have an example for us? Well, sure. Um, okay, let's take shaking hands. Shaking hands. All right, fine. Put your hand up. Oh, I see. Wow. 
That's great. Yeah, now, now that would have taken a dog maybe three or four months to learn. Uh -huh. And, and uh, they're just not really bright. How know? long did it take you? Uh, about an hour and a half. That's great. Uh, is there anything else you can do for us? Well, I uh, taught myself how to add. Um, like, if you give me two numbers, I can tell you what the sum of those two numbers is. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, any two. One and three. Uh, that would be four, Dave. That's unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. And, and this is yours also? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, what, what are you going to do here? Well, you'll see. Okay. George Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. Easy. He, hold it. Oh, he's, he's, he's a little nervous because of the crowd and the lights and so forth. So if we could all just be very, very quiet, please. Oh, that's... That's really nice. Really nice. Next, we have another comedy team, two writers who worked for the original Saturday Night Live, the comedy team of Tom Gamble and Max Pross, ladies and gentlemen. Tom? Max, nice to see you. Hi, David. Hi. Seems like I've seen your old professor, Einstein, today. How did you find Einstein, Tom? I pushed, I, I pushed his hair back. <laughs> you know what, Tom? I sure am sore at my girlfriend, Tilly. What is it? What is the name, Max? She's such a plate that when she passes a field of waving corn, she waves back. Yes, and then, there's one of, then there's one about the little shoeshine boy who tiptoed past the medic cabin. And he didn't, and he didn't uh, want to make up the sleeping pills. I think it's time for us to go. Tonight. I think so. Good night, Gamble and Cross, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Is it getting hot in here or, or what? Uh, and finally, our head writer, Meryl Marco, with a new sitcom that takes place in Florida, so I'm told. Meryl Marco, ladies and gentlemen. If you can come back here. And, and what, is, what is your little, uh, what is your... Well, what I've tried to do is <laughs> devise something that would be as if this weren't already some total entertainment for the viewing uh -huh. audience tonight, Dave. Total uh, entertainment. Yeah, I was trying to put together a sitcom that I thought would incorporate virtually everything that people like to see on a sitcom. I thought it would have stupid dialogue and some mindless violence and be set in a beautiful uh, tropical location where there'd be naked people running around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I thought perhaps you could star in it with me. I was, I was calling it modestly My Little Meryl. My Little Meryl. Well, I'd, I'd be proud to play a part in this epic. Do you have a script for us? Uh, why, sure I do. You're Herbie. I'm, I'm playing the part of Herbie, ladies okay. and gentlemen, in the episode, first episode of My Little Meryl. They're setting up the props now. We have the lovely the tropical lovely background. Setting. And we're ready to go? You bet we are. Okay, I just begin here? You read Herbie. I'm Herbie. Hi, honey, I'm home. <laughs> the boss will be here for dinner in just a minute. Is everything ready? Did you set the table? Set the table? I thought you said wreck the table. <laughs> Well, uh, we're going to put on our flak jackets. We'll be right back to talk to Terry Gar after you. Take a look at this. <laughs> 